So we're here in Thermopolis visiting with Mike Baker. He farms with his wife, Phyllis. Can you tell me what you're growing here? Yeah, barley, corn, and this year, um, I don't have a legume, I usually do, but this year uh, I'm planting some, some oats, uh, cover crop for grass. What's your, sort of your soil management program that you use? Well, I've begun to, to know or minimum till everything. Uh, it's been about, it's been six years since any of this soil was, was plowed. Um, I've experimented over the years with plowing and not plowing, and I realized that I was getting better results without a plow. No-till as much as I can, but I've found that with some of the row crops, especially beans, that's impossible. What motivated you to make that change? Number one, frugality, mm -hmm. uh, and, but number two, and probably at least as, as important as, as, as trying to save on input costs, was the observation that, that under the fence rows and along the edges of the field were more productive naturally than I could get out in the field where I was working it. It was a, a light bulb going off. And then the observation of going into the field, especially in the springtime, and brushing the surface trash back and observing the quality, the tilt, the texture of the soil was something that I could never get after mm -hmm. tillage. It's not as easy as just, just saying, okay, I'm gonna do this. There's a learning curve that's significant sure. Sure. and continues. Did it require some uh, equipment adaptations then in purchasing some new equipment to get started with this? A minor new equipment. I discovered that most of the equipment we were using, if used differently, would work well. Other than that, I bought a strip till machine. That did not work terribly well because we don't have the ability to plant right back into the strip, and I didn't have and don't have the ability to strip till and plant at the same time. I'd like to get to the time and place where I can, without even the strip till, plant no-till corn and I know it can be done, I just, I'm not there yet. Are you soil testing? I'm not. Okay. I'm using my experience and I, I don't know that I'm not being penny wise and found foolish in, in saving that money. The times I have soil tested, the recommendations were not achievable in my opinion mm -hmm. and it, it's been long enough ago mm -hmm. that I don't know that new recommendations wouldn't be better. The, the only concern I have about not Soil testing might be some of the micronutrients that could and would show up that I, I may not be catching. Did you put any fertilizer on in the fall with your cover crop? I did, about 30 pounds of nitrate is all. Uh -huh. uh, and then water? I did water, but we had enough natural moisture this last fall, very unusual fall. Have you noticed your fertilizer needs have changed? Yes and no, depends on the crop. It crosses my mind that the barley nitrates are being pushed below the ability of the roots to capture it, and the corn roots are going deep enough that they're pulling it back up. So your corn yields are up, your barley yields are down, but your barley inputs are significantly down as well. All my inputs are down, but barley particularly, we're no-tilling the barley completely. There is a concern that I'm learning to deal with by timing and if necessary by mechanical means, and that is fertilizer. Fertilizer applications in a no-till situation is not an automatic, you just do it the way you used to do it. I have an old grain drill, and I literally have converted it over to where I plant my fertilizer before I plant my barley. It's very obvious if you just fling your fertilizer out there on top and then no-till your barley in, that you will lose a significant portion of your nitrate. Mm -hmm. You will lose it. Mm -hmm. As your structure and your soil is starting to change and the water is starting to move through your soil differently, are you changing your irrigation practices? Not significantly. I thought I probably would have to lay in shorter runs, lay in extra strings of gated pipe. I've discovered it's not a factor. The water will go almost as far. I will say I've got land that is, proceeds further and further from the creek it is steeper and steeper, but the fields next to the creek are flat, and, and I thought that I would really, really have a hard time getting the water across those flatter fields. That has not been true. You can create a ridge and plant into that ridge at least two, if not three years, 
without ever having significant problems with, with irrigation, with flood irrigation. And I've learned that if you leave significant stubble standing or holding that surface trash from moving, you can water underneath of it. And the, the surface trash will rise and then settle when the water goes away and never move the two or three or four feet. That's typically a problem with flood irrigation. If it's cut loose and doesn't have any roots or anything to hold it in place, it will move and jam and then you create a real problem for yourself. That's one of the things that took some thinking about and observing that was a aha moment for me. Have you noticed any difference in your weed management as you've shifted over to less tillage? Definitely. There are weeds that the average person never has a problem with. Scouring rush is a, is a concern. Um, cheatgrass in the middle of fields, yes. Where we're positioned, where we're surrounded by 33,000 acres of BLM on the back side of us, 3,300 acres of BLM on the front side of us, and that seed blows, is carried in with the cattle, with the deer, anything that moves. I will say the perennial weeds, which I thought would be the, the most significant problem, have not been as much. The weed pressure is not enough um, to slow you down, but how are you, how are you managing for that? The thing that I am still learning the most about is how to handle the weeds in a no-till situation, and particularly as I've added cover crops in the fall. When everybody's out there in the spring just tilling the way out of their land, I'm out spraying. So are you grazing some of your fields as well? I have been running cows, wintering cows, oh, for at least 25 years. You need winter grazing to take some of that stubble and convert it into usable tilt in the soil. Otherwise, the, the surface trash is almost prohibitive. So when you have your cows out on some of those fields in the winter, do you have a notice that you get your soil more compacted in the spring? No. The real heavy cow pressure on the place has always been when the ground's frozen anyway. There's always a break when the surface of the ground will thaw a little and, and you'll get some trailing if you will, of cows as they trail to and from water. I have not had to go out with a shovel and, and dig through to stop of the water from following those cow trails. I am moving towards a summer grazing program with a portion of my acres that have a tendency to stay wet anyway. And so I'm ramping up so I'll have cows on the place year round. What have you noticed in terms of what your soil looks or feels or smells like? There is no doubt the soil is softer. It's easier to pack. And yet, if you handle it right, it holds more weight without packing. But if you hit it at the wrong time in the wrong way, you will pack it and you will see those, the results of that, not just one year, but up to three years. What type of advice would you give somebody else who wanted to try something new or, or try modifying their tillage? First thing would be observe your soil, understand why you're doing it, and what your goals are, and then think what works to obtain that. I've had to feel my way through this, and, and honestly, I think everybody kind of does. And we all have different soils, different conditions, and I have them just from one field to the next, or in the same field. In particular, go out there before you've done anything. Wipe that surface stuff back and look at your soil. That, to me, is the key to, to everything. The only way I have learned how to do this is to watch. I'm learning, I hope. <laughs> I think I am. 